It's Roger McDonald from The Roger McDonald Show. My great privilege to interview Gregory V. Deal, the author of a couple of fantastic books. One is Travel as Transformation, and the other one is a fantastic brand new book, Brand Identity Breakthrough. Welcome, Gregory. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And you're in Armenia at the moment, aren't you? I am in Armenia. Until a few days ago, I was in Tbilisi, Georgia, which is a very, I would say, underappreciated, unknown place for expatriates to hang out. You don't hear a lot of travelers or tourists talking about going over to Georgia or other former USSR countries, but um, Tbilisi in particular, to me, has the hallmarks of a very rapidly developing city and country as a whole, and they're very uh, welcoming of foreigners, people who either want to come and stay as tourists or expatriates, actually, or actually become residents or citizens of the country. And it's the kind of place where things work very well for a very low cost of living. You get an almost first world existence for a third world cost of living. Wow. Yeah, when I read that in your book about Georgia, I just maybe want to go there. <laughs> so you, Gregory, if you, for our viewers, Gregory has traveled 45 countries uh, with, and you're 28 years old now? Yes, just wow. turned 28 last month. And you've had some tremendous experiences. I've read your book, Travel as Transformation, and I've almost finished your brand identity breakthrough book. And uh, they're really great books, and I encourage anyone to get them simply because of the weight of your identity and your philosophy and your travel experiences really gives a new angle to, to some of those concepts. And, and so, yeah, tell us about what you've done um, you know, prior to this point. You've got a book coming out uh, very soon on November 1st. Uh, tell us about your, your previous book, Gregory, if that's okay. Well, you know, it's funny. The, the two books, the first one is about business ostensibly, and the second one is about travel ostensibly. But really what they're both about is the concept of identification, you know, who you are and what that means to be something. And um, they both come at this subject from very different angles. Like the first one is about branding and business identity and how your customers know who you are and how they conceive of you and what makes you more valuable than your competition um, and why you're going into the business you are as an entrepreneur. And then the second one is more on a personal level, what I learned by traveling the world for the last 10 years, going to as many different radically different cultures as possible and how that has changed me as an individual and how I believe it has the potential to change other people in ways that probably very few other things can. So they're coming at this this subject of what it means to be an individual, to be a unique human being from very different places. And I have a feeling this is a theme that's going to continue in whatever future books I write as well. But to me, nothing is more important than understanding who you are and how that shows up in the world. You, you really remind me of Tim Ferriss. And I mean that as a compliment, just your attitude of, you know, cruising around the world and doing stuff, uh, Gregory, so I love that. And, and I love uh, the way you wrote Brand Identity was all your experiences, you've been to Iraq, Iraq, you taught in Iraq, you taught in yes. China, all these cool different places around the world. And that really shone through in your understanding of human behavior and what, what drives people and what, what makes a brand, what makes an individual and how we're part of these huge states and ideologies and all that kind of stuff, cool stuff. I just thought that was really fascinating how you explained that. As, as yeah, I mean, yeah. there are a lot of different terms to talk about the same things. Like, uh, I'll use the term culture a lot, yeah. probably in ways that people aren't used to hearing it be told, or a term like group identification, you know, why people at a particular place all tend to believe similar things or act similar ways. Well, it, it's either genetic, right, like they're born predisposed to act in a certain way, or they've learned things growing up in that environment that have made them believe certain things and act certain ways. And if you're aware of this as a person, you can sort of break free of this and not be subject to whatever the group identification or cultural identity of where you happen to have been born, whatever that's being inflicted upon you without your choice in the matter, right? Hopefully, by the time you become an adult, you can start to make the choice for yourself. Okay, do I actually really want to believe these things and act this way, or am I free to choose for myself how I want to believe and how I want to act? And if that's the case, you know, what are the limits of this? That's part of the reason why I became obsessed with travel, is I wanted to know as many different ways as possible that people had learned to live on this planet so I could pick and choose for myself which of those I wanted to adopt into my own life. That's outstanding. I, I really love your, your way of, of living your life. And, and my mind has really expanded from reading Traveler's Transformation. And uh, just, just by the way you explain things, and uh, I never ever thought of living in Ecuador or uh, the Philippines 
or in Georgia or in some of those other countries you mentioned until I read your book and I was thinking to myself, you know what, I should get a, a second or third passport and really expand my life. And, and just on a personal note, I had this feeling that, you know, you grew up in a place, I'm half Samoan, half Australian. I never felt like I really fitted in one place where I grew up. And it's just, I think that maybe something that your readers, your readership can identify with is that never, that feeling of not fitting where they've grown up and where they've been born and that really they can craft and find their own identity and destiny anywhere in the world they, they choose to. But that's something I got from your book. So tell us about Travel for Transformation. It's coming out on November 1st. Gregory. It takes a very philosophical uh sort of a deeper approach to a subject that I think has already been done to death. I mean, there are probably thousands of travel books out there that tell you either like where you should go at what time of year, or they're more lifestyle oriented, like you should become a digital nomad and go live on the beach in Thailand and, and live on $500 a month. I mean, there are so many of those blogs and books already written. Uh, this is much more about the internal aspects of how travel changes you than it is about what's going on out there in the world, although I do talk about that quite a bit too, because it is by experiencing the things happening out there in the world and other people that you change your understanding of yourself. By pushing your limits of what you think is possible, you grow as a person. So people should not buy this book expecting it to be like a travel guide or reasons why you should quit your job and go travel the world. It's, it's for people even if you're not interested in travel, it's more about the process of inquiry. That it, travel is just the mechanism through which I found the the most rapid path to inquiry. But it's about questioning everything you think is true, the most fundamental things, uh, the, the unconscious certainties. When you wake up in the morning and you know that what the floor is going to feel like when you get out of bed and put your feet on it. Like you don't think about those things because you have just accepted it as true. And you don't realize how much you do that for so many things in your life that do not have to be that way. The laws of physics are the way they are. Like that's an unconscious certainty you can rely on. But so many other things about the way you have perceived how to interact with other human beings, the way to feed and clothe yourself and think about how the universe is ordered or the meaning behind everything, all of that is subject to change, but you don't realize that until you've asked enough questions and experienced the many different ways to answer those questions. Amazing. And Isaac Asimov was one of your uh, role models early on, wasn't he, philosophically? You mentioned in your book. Yeah, I used that as an example. When I first started traveling, the first country I went to was Costa Rica, where I spent about nine months intentionally doing as little as possible like for really just allowing myself to just exist without the pressures of the outside world telling me who to do or what to be while everyone else I knew at 18 and 19 was going off to college and getting set on this path for life I was experimenting with just doing whatever I felt like doing in the moment and as a tourist in a foreign country that gave me a lot more freedom to do that uh, under very different conditions than what I knew. At that time, I started reading a lot of Isaac Asimov's non-fiction work. He's also a very famous uh, science fiction author. I'd read a lot of his stories before, but he also wrote these books called The New Intelligent Man's Guide to Science. And that was the first time I ever finally understood how science worked, like how human beings had come to question how reality is put together and how all these concepts stacked together to form one logically cohesive story about how the universe works. And things like that at that time in my life, because I was in a position where I was willing to question and reorder my mind in my life, it completely changed the way that I interpreted how we view things, how we acquire knowledge, you know, and, and how science and, and our knowledge of the universe and culture changes over time by questioning things. So I, I would say that Asimov's work profoundly impacted the way that I conceptualize information. And that's a book I must read. It's on my list. It's gone on my list. That's the next book I read. It's, it's, <laughs> thick. it's, it's about two a thousand page volumes. Wow. Um, so Gregory, I just want to ask you a question. I know I didn't give you a question earlier, but what was probably the toughest experience you had in all that time of traveling 45 countries over a decade? And how'd you get through well, it? Well, in travel, sorry, go on. And how'd you get through it? I just thought that might be interesting to ask. In Travel as Transformation, I have a chapter called uh, Approaching the Dark Night of the Soul, which is a term that's used a lot in philosophy and storytelling, which is the point in the narrative where the protagonist reaches his his point of failure, where he realizes he cannot overcome the obstacle mm. in front of him. Uh, maybe if you use Star Wars as an example, it's where 
Luke Skywalker gets his hand cut off in his fight with Darth Vader, and he suddenly learns that Darth Vader is actually his father and lets out this, you know, soul-crushing, no, that's impossible! Like, to him, that's his personal point of deepest, darkest despair, where all hope seems lost. He's physically beaten, and emotionally, he's just had his entire concept of identity shattered because of this revelation that the most evil man in the galaxy is his father. Uh, just as a, as a very obvious narrative example. And I believe we all have these moments as individuals too, where once we have learned to identify who it is we really are and what we really care about, which I had been doing for years up to this point during my travels, where I felt more excited and on fire about life because I was learning and growing and, and trying new things, I also opened the door to experience the exact opposite, which where I realized that the things I cared about could all be taken away from me and destroyed from my own perspective. And that's what I experienced by spending about six months in China, where I witnessed a world where human individuality seemed almost completely extinguished, uh, where uh, individual thought was suppressed, uh, basic freedom of choice was taken from people before they even could conceive of such a concept because they were all brainwashed from a very early age. I worked in education in China, so I was witness firsthand to all this, this almost dystopian society that never could have even envisioned existed until I witnessed it myself firsthand. And this is some of the stereotype that exists about China now is that people think it's this robotic, monotonous society, overcrowded streets and pe nobody thinking for themselves. And as a stereotype, it's almost comical. But when you're there living the experience and participating in this machine, it was the most soul-destroying experience of my life, where I almost lost all faith in humanity. I was probably 23 at this time. It took me a long time to recover from that, but it's moments like that, that when you learn to overcome, you become more or less invincible when you realize that the thing you feared most, that had the most negative effect on you, you can recover from. Which, and China, and I know, because I know quite a few people from China, and uh, it's like it goes, counterpart or op the opposite to the life that you're wanting to talk about which is freedom you're talking about freedom and having many passports and living where you want to live and 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 you know having your money in one country and, and being a tourist in another country and you know having your, maybe a family home in one country whereas with China it was it was controlled the, th the thinking was controlled mm -hmm. the economy was controlled social behavior was so controlled I mean just reading that little bit about China just really blew my mind in terms of um, just understanding uh, you know, how people can develop these modes of thought and then operate them and, and perceive them as absolute truth. And where you're talking about is, is coming from that total place of freedom, which I absolutely love. I absolutely love that idea. So, yeah. Yeah, I think the way I phrased it in the book was that uh, Chinese culture, Chinese group identity was completely antithetical to my existence, existence as an individual. Like once I realized what I stood for and what defined me, I experienced the exact opposite and was completely surrounded by it. I would say China was far worse for me than even a place like Iraq. Wow, really? Right, cool. Mm-hmm. What do you, just quote, you're from America and obviously, you know, USA, USA. Um, I just went to America recently, and just from a, a position of a, an outside observer, I went to a baseball game, and you know, you go and you, they do that whole national anthem thing, and and I just I just felt prickles all over me, and I just felt, wow, there's a narrative in America, and you're from America, so you, and I just it was so tremendously powerful, it just it just the amount of unity in thought, you know, there's China obviously where it's all homogenous, and there's USA with liberty and all that. I just felt I just just wanted to touch on that briefly that I just felt that with Americans there's such a powerful unity there um, which comes from that you know that founding fathers nar narrative I mean what, what do you think of that you know what, what's your perspective on that having I have a love hate relationship with the states I'll put it that way <laughs> yeah. uh, I spent the first 18 years of my life in San Diego California which you know is not a terrible place to grow up by any means but I felt very stifled uh, very limited there, which is why I was so eager to get out as soon as I turned 18. Um, I'm, you know, now that I've seen so much of the world, I'm very capable of recognizing many of the advantages that are, are afforded by growing up in the U.S. and being a U.S. citizen. And I do recognize that we are a nation of immigrants. There is probably more diversity in the United States than there is any other country in the world, uh, just because of our history of a couple hundred years of immigrants coming over and affecting the culture. 
but I also do recognize there is this very strange kind of national brainwashing of, of you know, <laughs> what it means to be a patriot, to be an American, yeah, you know, yeah. and that, again, it's a stereotype, but a lot of it is true, too, and not as much in California, but in, in uh, like, the Midwest states, you go out there, uh, you see a lot of that, just people just, the U.S. is their religion, it's their identity, and, um, you know, now we have this uh, horrible election coming up in November between what I consider to be two terrible choices for <laughs> president, and it is just consuming people's entire thought process and identity. And while I am still an American citizen, I have never been more glad to be physically distanced from what's going on over there right now. Yeah, oh, I tell you what. When I was in America, I got the powerful sense that this this is a nation of people that can absolutely do anything, and they're an unstoppable force. They and I just thought they just probably need to stop interfering around the world and just focus on themselves because I just thought Americans were awesome. Just just in terms of that unity and they're friendly and everyone says how are you sir and they're great people. I just thought you know, get out of other countries, all that political you know corporate stuff going on, and focus on yourselves for a bit. You know? Back to you, Gregory. What's your future vision for you and your business? You do some pretty cool stuff. So, what you got? What have you got planned? I do some cool stuff. Well, um, I do a lot of business consulting for for brand development, narrative development, uh, people expressing their unique value proposition in their business. I do a lot of personal coaching work for people who need to break out of. Uh, personal limitations they've adopted in their mentality about who they are and what they can do. I definitely plan to write several more books because these first two have gone so well, and I'm sure that I'll only get better at this as I write more of them. Yeah. First book is is a bestseller in public relations on Amazon, so that's already been relatively successful. I, I assume the second one will be even more so. Um, personal lifestyle-wise, I think I'm ready to start settling down somewhere in the world. I talk about Ecuador quite a bit in the book, and uh, just the general concept of how I feel there's there's a major change happening sociologically and economically around the world, where a lot of the powers that are in place now in the states and Europe and possibly Australia, I don't know if they've been to Australia, they're going to be on a downward trend, and a lot of the nations that were previously third world countries and now have entered what I call the, the second world phase where they're developing quickly and things are still comfortable, although not quite up to the level of first world, uh, they're, they're growing very quickly. And I think in the next 10 to 20 years, those are going to be the kind of places you want to be for quality of life and low cost of living, where you're accepted and you have maximum freedom as an individual, and probably politically and economically, they're going to gain a lot more power too. So a place like Ecuador, I, I said, is probably my ideal choice, at least out of all the places I've seen. But I also talk about places like Georgia, the Philippines, I really like from a lifestyle perspective. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's all up in the air. That's why it's important to be diversified, to have a little variety, so you have multiple options. I'm glad that I'm comfortable living almost anywhere in the world at this point, because the future is completely unknown. It's important to spread yourself out as a citizen, uh, as a business person, and just uh, in, individually where you're comfortable living. Exciting stuff, exciting stuff, Gregory. So uh, I just want to quickly talk about your podcast, Uncomfortable Conversations with Gregory. I mean, that sounds really interesting, and, and I'm really looking forward to having listened to that. I'd actually try, yeah, could you tell us a bit more about that? Well, I'm just getting it started. Okay, I've just start. started recording episodes. It's not published yet. I'm okay. thinking within the next month or two, I'll have several episodes up. But um, the concept is getting people to talk about things that they normally wouldn't either have the emotional or intellectual wherewithal to get to in the course of regular conversation, but are conversations that need to happen in their life. And that's different for each person. Everyone has something that they're not saying. That's somewhere in their mind that is not fully expressed. I have a knack for getting people to say very uncomfortable things and getting them to go deeper and deeper into things they normally would, would walk away from. Sometimes the response is very positive. Sometimes it can be very uh, full of negative emotions, either the sadness as they're realizing something very important about themselves or unsurprising the anger directed at me as I get people to experience things they weren't expecting to experience. So that's the whole gimmick of the show. It's just over the course of an hour or so of talking to Gregory Deal, you start to get very uncomfortable. But the idea of having long-term beneficial results, you're very welcome to be a guest sometime if you'd like, as long as you're willing to be uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I'll have a think about that. 
but uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I, I don't know if I'm ready to be that uncomfortable. But um, but I, I look forward to having listened to a few episodes. Maybe maybe I'll be guest one day. Uh, that's that's really exciting, really awesome. But I know we've got a free gift for our listeners, and we'll what I'll do is I won't mention it in the video, but we'll talk about it when we do the social media sharing and that kind of stuff. But I really do want to thank you, Gregory, uh, for taking the time today. Gregory Deal, uh, Brand Identity Breakthrough and Travel Ads Transformation. Brand Identity Breakthrough is an Amazon bestseller. Uh, Travel Ads Transformation is coming out November 1st. Uh, anything you want to say just to wrap up, Gregory? I would just say, um, you know, my everything I do, everything I put out in the world is about getting people to be, to go deeper into things, to be brave enough to ask questions, mm. to try new things. And, um, you know, Read, I'd say read Travel as Transformation again, even if you're not a traveler or never even thought about being one. When I first started traveling, I had I had no interest in doing it. So it wasn't until I realized what it meant to be a traveler. And be willing to forget the narrative of what you think that means. And in the same way, if you want to read my other book, Brand Identity Breakthrough, be willing to forget what you think your business is about or what you think your um, you know narrative in businesses or how your customers perceive you that's the whole premise of that book is undo what you think people like about you and come at it from a different approach and i'm happy to give away a couple of uh, free copies of these books to your listeners if they want i could send out some paperbacks if you want to do it a giveaway or something uh, yeah definitely we'll, i'll do that in the uh, social media post but we'll definitely work out a way to give a few of your books out to people um we'll have a bit of a talk after we stop recording about how many we're going to give out and and that kind of cool stuff and um, I love your books they really touch on the soul of humanity which in branding just quickly branding books and all that kind of stuff sometimes it can be very dry but the way you've shone your experiences through that has made me took my understanding of branding to a new level and with Traveler's Transformation that, that book really touches on the really what it's what it is to be human I just I just thought it was a really good book and really encourage people to read it so uh, yeah Thank you so much, Gregory Deal. Uh, and I'm just going to press stop now, but we'll have a chat after this. After the other side of this. Thank you so much, Gregory. Thanks for having me.